we're I'm running out of parts for this run. You know, I decided to edit it down, so you want to see me just running around the land for like 20 parts. Because that's what it was originally going to be, and I decided to edit it down to this. And it's kind of morbid when you think about it, but you actually killed Hornet's mom by doing that. <laughs> How sad. But we got a Hollow Knight, or the Radiance to kill. We can't take, um, statistics, right? Like, it's kind of weird. Hornet's like, oh, I kind of respect you. you you're the chosen one. But she wants you to leave immediately. And I'm not going to let you bear witness to the horror that is the corridors of this area. Like, I get- I- I have gotten lost in that area so many times. It's just sad. It's so easy to get lost in this area. And that's why I sped it up so it wouldn't be a part on its own where it's just me wandering these webbed, monster-infested corridors. Yeah, but what, you just have to get the other two bugs that are sleeping to form that protective barrier around the Hollow Knight to supposedly keep the infection at bay, which obviously didn't work because it phased through the walls somehow. Like, one bug was like, I'm going to drain this now. And that's how it went downhill. But what can you do? There's a lot of annoying spider enemies in this area, where they just sort of walk towards you. But they appear out of nowhere, that's what makes them hard to read. They just pop in and they're like, yeah, I'm here guys! I'm here to attack the knight! Why do they feel like they can attack me? I got the nail. Nail of pain. Like I said, I hate those- Like, I don't really like those face shield enemies. Like, they're always in, like, a corridor that doesn't have a high ceiling, so you have to use a nail art to defeat them. Also, this place is riddled with traps where the floor will collapse suddenly under you and then there's spikes that will impale you if you decide to fall if you're not careful. Like, some of the floors are so low that you will instantly hit the spikes without being cautious at all. And that's sort of the problem with this area. You, like, there's a quest that I'm probably going to do in another run, and yes, there's probably going to be another run because of the Gods and Glory patch, the um, third content pack. Which is a... And I'm glad that, like, the DLC is free, but I would actually pay five dollars. This isn't like your greedy company, like, Battlefront 2 by EA that charges two hundred and four dollars. You know, like, I can buy something much, much better for that cost. And one of my friends was complaining how Ray was in the Clone Wars. And oh boy, don't get me started on that movie either. Um, The Force Awakens had a very boring protagonist. Like, the people who were, like, getting the actors to actually act were like, Okay, Ray, we need you to act angry. And then she suddenly bulges her eyes out with this, like, poker face. And then they're like, we need you to act sad. And then they're like, and then she's like... Then she, like, pouts her face a bit, but she still has that overlining poker face. Also, there's a secret area that I'm completely talking over, but this is where you get a charm that allows you to spawn little spiders. So, yeah. Anyways. Like... <laughs> Like, a bunch of producers are putting out these boring protagonists 
It's not really gender, it's just... Some people are just boring when they're like, Oh, we need you to act, but we need you to bulge out your eyes in order to act. Like, that's sort of a problem with the Hunger Games as well, but it's less of an issue, I'd say. But the rest of The Force Awakens is like... Like, I literally like all the other characters besides the protagonist. And it's like, oh, I learned how to use lightsaber in, like, five minutes. You know? What happened to writing good characters? I guess it's all about money now, guys. What can you do about that? I... I don't know. Maybe... Maybe writers and movies need to get a better education or something. Because if they're putting out these... Very bland, two-dimensional characters. They deserve to go back to writing school. And I'll be... And if you're a writer of something yourself, not for fan fiction, of course, but if you disagree, please mention it. Because I would like to argue about writing in movies, maybe. So this is a cave in the Howling Cliffs. Say that three times faster. But basically this is where the um, lifeblood, um, like where you, like this is like a major lifeblood area. And it's interesting because whenever you see like the enemy names, like for the main agents of the infection are called the Light Seeds. And, like, the, um, lifeblood creatures you collect for more masks are called life seeds. And a character showing up really soon called Joni was considered a heretic. Because, um, I think he's a he... I don't know. Like, maybe it's a she, I think. And she was considered a heretic by the Pale King for some reason... Like, I kind of describe why maybe infection is like a corrupted form of, like, lifeblood. And it's interesting, lifeblood turns into butterflies. And while the infection, like, the only time we ever see infection and it's like an adult form is later in the game with the um, Watcher Knights, where they sort of go into, like, the corpses or the remains of these knights, and then they reanimate them from the dead. But, you know, I'd wager that the infection would be consisting of moths instead of butterflies. Um, Rogue One was a lot better. Like, the main protagonist felt more entertaining and actually had a character. Like, a lot, like, there's this one YouTuber that called Ray a Mary, a, like a Mary Sue? You know? And, um, Ray from The Force Awakens was definitely a Mary Sue? Yeah, but there's also the some um, area in the abyss where if you have enough um, lifeblood masks, you can go into this area, which is I would assume the origin of the lifeblood creatures. Like there's an H in the background that we don't know about. But you have to look very carefully, like, there's, like, another YouTube video where it's like, Oh, this is the lifeblood creature in the background! And it's, like, this cropped image from the game files. But it's hard to see. Like, you can sort of see it, and then you suddenly get teleported out of there by blue dream particles. How odd, if I say so myself. Maybe the Bale King noticed that that was another, like, god or something and banned it because people were absorbing it like infection. But, you know, like, lifeblood seems more common 
you know, careful compared to the very aggressive nature and, like, the possessive nature of infection. And I finally go to the fog cannon, the area with the, with the jellyfish. Like, it's kind of weird, like, you would have creatures that you would expect, like, bugs and snails that are in, like, a bug's ecosystem. But then, there were jellyfish. And there are floating jellyfish, too, that have explosive cores. Like, with an infection in them, I wager, because it's orange. Um, let me see, do they- they don't really bleed or Oh, so, I don't know. Like, the main reason things have infection is because a bug is dreaming, like... I asked- I asked, why wasn't the elder bug infected in the end of the game? Because, you know, he's like a floor down, like... If you go to, like, the, um, black egg area... You'll realize that Elder Bug is actually, like, to the left of that room and then up. You know, you would think he would get infected, but it turns out that the Elder Bug was taking his caffeine. And he was like, nope, I'm not sleeping tonight. And that's why he's been infected, which is pretty surprising. Yeah. But this area houses the, um, other bug, the teacher that resides in the- I forgot the name of the room, and I'll probably tell you it once we- well, I'll just skip ahead, you know? So let's see, it's called the Teacher's Archives, and this bug was considered the teacher, and as you remember from, like, the first part, there's a quote from this bug, which might seem really confusing, but this plot really doesn't love telling you stuff. Well, it loves not telling you stuff. Like, if you ever look at a plot summary for this game, after playing it blind, you're like, What? What? what what's that? Why is this so convoluted? Yeah, and I was like, why is it convoluted too? But it's, it's really interesting. The game makes you search for the plot. The, you know, most games, it's like the plot is strangling you down, and it wants you to know its presence. It's like, I'm the plot! You must know me! And then the person's like, I don't want to be with you, plot! But this game makes you search for the plot. This is a work of art while the plot doesn't strangle you down. It doesn't chain you down and be like, this game, this gameplay is only for the plot. Like, there's a lot of games that are like that. Like, there's one game that I'd wager is kind of like that. It's called Kingdom Hearts. It's a game where Disney, the happy-go-lucky company, which is slightly greedy with a game company called like Square Enix with their Final Fantasy series combine and make a dark and depressing game with cartoony happy-go-lucky characters. It's like, uh, what could... Why, why is this even working? And there's this one channel I can I really enjoy. His name is just a pancake. He does good plot summaries of those plot. Like he has an 18 minute video summarizing the entire plot. And this boss, Umalu, Umalu, uh, um, Umalu. That's fun to say if I'm pronouncing it right. It's a bit annoying since you have to wait for this guy to actually attack him, and then I'll just sort of compress in words, and then you can actually strike him. Sometimes he spawns little um, electric bugs in a random area. Sometimes he does the um, he summons them where your your relative location is, and that's that's all to him. So where was I? Oh yeah, the kingdom, kingdom hearts is like, 
where the plot is like, I take the diamond. You know, it's like it has a really convoluted plot for a game, but it chains you down. It's like uh, the plot's like I'm the reason for this. If you ever look at a plot summary for Kingdom Hearts, you, you'll be very confused. And I kind of remember um, just the Pancake's plot summaries. Um, so this is a teacher's area, like any other um, sleeping um, guardian, they just stand there and um, suicide for you. They're like, oh, you're the chosen one, we're gonna sit here and take it for you. Come you know? I w you know, I was really expecting some grand battle where they were, like, doing attacks or some, like, something. You know? I was expecting anything. Except for nothing. I was kind of surprised when I beat the Watcher Knights, and then I went up to, like, the Observer guy, the Observer bug, and then he was just, like, so easy to deal with. I, ex I was expecting some big grand battle, but he was just like, yeah, I'm here. Uh, absorb me, Chosen One. Go. Do it. You can dream nail me if you want lore. Hmm. Yeah. It's kind of sad when you think about it. So basically after this we need to get to the final guy, the Observer, who is somewhere in a watchtower. Because you know, just in case if that building doesn't collapse by any unexpected things, like unexpected external forces that may bother the status quo of this um, village, this kingdom. You know, why not? And I believe this part's being fast forwarded. Oh, this got really short when I fast-forwarded it. Oh wait, it's supposed to be at normal speed. Let me go change that. Normal, normal power. Command Z for the win. So this is where I'm going. I'm going to the Queen's Gardens. You know. Where the, um, Queen of the Pale King sort of planted a bunch of stuff and called it her garden. First, I'm going to be going to the Overgrown Mound. But these jellyfish enemies caused me a bit of troubles my first playthrough since I was like, Wait, do these attacks just uh, hit you all the time? But it turns out you can just hug a wall. Like, hide behind a wall and hug it really hard, and no matter how big the explosion is, it will never phase through the wall. Like, that's a really good thing about video game walls. Like, nothing will pass through them. Like, Trump should consider making a great wall out of these, like, explosion-blocking walls. Whee! Conservative stuff! In a video game commentary! You know? Um, the overgrown mound sort of expects you to, like, the game expects you to go from the, um, Queen's, um, station to this area fairly early in the game. Because you get the scream attack. What's so good about the stream? The, um, I forgot what the exact name is. Let me skip a bit. Oh, we're out. Oh, the howling, the howling wraiths. Pretty nice. And this ability is very powerful. Like with the shaman stone, it does 120 damage. That's like thir It takes like 13 of these to kill Nightmare King Grim. And that's a valid strategy to use against him. 
But once you get the, um, shade cloak, you can head through this area. Um, the Queen's Garden is probably one of the most dangerous areas in the game besides the White Palace. It houses the second most difficult platforming challenge challenges that are not the White Palace. Like, the White Palace is pretty difficult because it's like, you better platform right or you'll get saw bladed and you can't shade cloak through these saw blades. We were prepared for the Super Meat Boy levels of difficulty. I'm not doing the Path of Pain for this playthrough. That is too painful to do again. Maybe in another playthrough, but not this one. Because I already did it once. I got the, um, I uploaded recently. So all is good and well with that. Now, some annoying, like, they're not really annoying, but you're pretty much fighting up against beefed up mantis enemies. Like, the young, um, infected mantis enemies will sort of hover close to you and will throw, like, a boomerang blade at you. And then you have the, um, adult infected mantises, which actually have, like, a jump attack and they'll dive downwards and and hit you with their um, blades because they're infected. No, come here. Sorry for that, my cat wanted in. He wanted into my room. Because he was annoyed that the door was closed, aren't you? No, come on, say something. Say something for shame! Ah, uh, he's not in the mood to talk, is he? You know, some cats are really silent. Sometimes with that, when they want something, they're like, Give me food! Uh, give me food! That's how cats act. You know... This one right next to me is a particularly intelligent cat because he actually points out when he wants food. The other one is, you know, dumb, dumb as rocks. He knows that a door is there. You know? Um, so let's see. Back to this area of the game. And hopefully back to the, um, original converse. Oh, yeah. The adult infected mantises, or man- yeah, mantises. Have a up- like an upwards jump and then dive attack. And then they also just have a thrust attack as well. But instead of having, like, nails like your normal bug would have, they have straight up blades. Because why not? What's interesting about this section is that, you know, you can't stay on one platform forever. It's like, you yeah, you can't stay on this forever. You have to move. And moving's really good in this section because if you don't move, you fall. And when you fall, you get hit. And if you get hit enough, you die. And this is a steel soul run. So that's game over. That means you're dead. No surprise there. It's kind of annoying platforming with enemies. Oh, and there's also some flying moss bugs that are like, I'm hanging out. I'm, I'm floating here. I'm here. And you're like, go away. And they're like slowly flying towards you. And then you're like, I don't want to kill you now. You're so adorable. How could you float near me? I have to kill you now because you hurt me. You should never die to those enemies, by the way. Like, you you have to be a new- like, a we- You have to be a pretty broken person to be able to go through this entire area and then die to one of the moss bugs. It's like, I know the platform, but these slow-flying moss bugs gave me the most trouble. 
You know? It's like saying, Ender, I died to the weakest. Like, a lot of people from the other Discord were joking. Oh, I died to the first enemy. So there's this little section where these enemies, of course, try to gang up on you. And that's a bad thing, so you have to kill them. Because that, because they're not nice. They're infected enemies. They're gonna die because I'm not dying. Once you beat that section, you can head closer to the Traitor Lord. Who's pretty interesting in lore. Like, unlike the other Mantis Lords, he's a male, and since we're talking about bug stuff, the male, like, Mantises are actually smaller than the female, so he took infection to become stronger. Which is pretty interesting, if I say so myself. And somebody got this information by just looking at, like, the debug information. Like, you probably couldn't look into the game and say, Oh, that guy's different. But yeah, because of the infection, he looks a whole lot more bulbous and bit... Like, he's like 10% bigger than the other Mantis Lords with the, um, infection. Also, this area is where you deposit the flower from the, um, Delicate Flower Quest. Which is something I may be doing in the future, because that's a pain. Like, people say, oh, you just find a path, and then you clear out all the enemies, and then you head through that path. And I was thinking, uh, uh her -der, I'm just gonna go to a bench, and then save and quit. And then I'm gonna teleport back to the bench, but apparently, you can't do that. The developers were like, Oh, you're not doing that, sir. You're not cheesing through this like an average plebeian would. I'm like, no. I wanted the cheese to get the mask shard. But what can you do when you can't get that mask shard? Um, so let's see. Let's see. So I'm getting close to the Traitor Lord, which is actually a pretty fun boss fight. And if you encountered Gloss, the um, other, the um, the, um, the bug that you find in some areas of the game, if you encounter her in all three of her areas, you can actually have her fight with you against the Traitor Lord. And you know, I kind of feel bad for Taizo. He, he, you know, there's this other bug that's like, I want to go to the Coliseum and fight! And then he dies. And I'm like, you, he should have been like, a, like an assistant or something for like the, like, you know how the, um, the God Tamer uses two? Like, it's like her and that giant claw did. It should have been Taizo and you fighting. Then he dies at the end, but nope. He's like, he's like, yeah, I'm dead now. I didn't do anything significant to the plot. Like, Cloth did something, and I feel bad for Taizo. Like, if I spent like $200, like $100 or something for the Kickstarter, and I was like, I want this character, and then that character just dies a couple, like, minutes in. Like, you see his corpse in the, um, Kingdom's Edge on one of the platforms, I think, if you talk to him enough, and he's just dead. Poor Taizo. So in this area, you can- you encounter some infected mantises. Nothing like before, I hope not. These guys aren't uh, too bad to deal with, in my opinion. And then you encounter the Traitor Lord, who pretty much has the same attacks as the, um, um, normal infected mantises. However, he takes up more space, so therefore, he has a longer attack range, and that's really it. Nah, yeah, he's really easy. This is where you encounter the, um, White Lady. 
which is the person who offered her seed for all the um, little knights that died in the void, you know? It's kind of morbid when you think about it. You can also dream nail her, which is like, oh, I, can re I can read your action share. I think there's like an area in the game where there's like a cradle where you hear the um, melody. Where like if you die, you just hear like a distorted version of it. It's like, 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 like something really creepy and depressing like that. And it's just kind of interesting. Thankfully, I haven't... Like, in my first playthrough, it was a mess. And this is when we're getting to the failed champion. The failed champion pretty much takes all of the weaknesses of the first boss of the game, um, the false knight, and makes him into a sanic, speeded mace wielder. And it's a very horrifying fight because you have to be very careful. Like, the only time you can actually strike this guy is whenever he's not, like, whenever he's not swinging his mace on the ground and causing that shock wave to form. Like, that's, like, whenever he's jumping into the air, you could probably get a hit in. But you really have to know what he does in order to actually beat him. And there's also some boulders falling that you can actually hit at him. Which is actually pretty nice for this fight. It allows you to get some pot shots in without really getting close to him at all. So yeah, besides his upgrades and speed and more damage, he's pretty simple to deal with. As long as you know his attack patterns and everything else, you should defeat him with ease, of course. But this took a couple tries from me, which is kind of sad, but oh well. What can you do? This guy isn't too hard. Once you get his patterns down, he, he he's, isn't that much of a difficult boss. You just have to be really careful. Since two hits is no joke in this game. Like, it, it pretty much lessens the amount of HP you have. Cause it's like, oh, nope, you, you just are gonna die quicker. You know, but once you defeat him he's in Dream Nail, he's like, I'm the strongest now. It turns out that Maga wanted to take the armor, like, he stole the armor from another knight who's mentioned sometimes, but he's, like, the knight, like, the knight who had the armor was in this group of five that consisted of four, like, five other members, like, four other members. And apparently he stole the armor so that he could defend his fellow maggots because apparently in the game maggots are pretty much the... Weakest creatures. Those quadrids? Nope, these maggots are the weakest. It's kind of morbid because the um, journal post is like, oh, you cooked them over a fire. Like a marshmallow. <laughs> you, you get it? No, it's morbid. And that's why this game is dark. Um. And there's actually this room where you can scream in and you get an upgrade. And the game never tells you, oh, you should use this ability in this realm. It just sort of implies it. It's like these these other statues look like they're screaming. Therefore, I should use the ability. Herder. Yeah, but I learned that from my first playthrough. I was like, where's the separate? I'm gonna show you how much I have to edit through 
Like, it's at eight times the normal speed. It's going super static speed. Woo! It's going super duper fast. I'm not gonna put ear re rape in because I'm above that level. I'm not shallow. Whenever I mention a Sanic meme, I don't do rape users. Uh, but some people just disagree. But whatever, what can you do if I can say so myself? So let's move on to Markos, who's probably, like, one of the easiest bosses in my opinion, because you can just bum rush Markov to death. As you can see from this fight, you just bum rush. And then you just go. Like, I don't, like... I don't know if she's considered a he or a she, but she just goes down really easily. Like, you can just bum rush your nail, swipe at her. Like, this is especially quick if you have the quick slash. Like, you're like, zippity zippity done, I'm done with this fight. And it's really easy to beat Markov. Like, if I ever make a top 10, like a ranked boss list, this probably has to rank like 3. 3, I tell you. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and see you next part. Ciao!